Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We're in Obadiah chapter 1 verse 9, 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 3, and Romans chapter 8 verse 8. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Father God, for this word. Thank you for helping us to walk forward in truth and in lordship. Lord God, forgive us for our sins. Help us to enter into this gate with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys. Um, Obadiah chapter 1, verse 9. Remember, it says 9 on the screen, but it's actually 1. That's just what the computer does because Obadiah only has one chapter. All right. Obadiah chapter 1, verse 9. And your mighty men shall be dismayed, O ten men, so that every man from Mount Esau will be cut off by slaughter. All right. And so remember, Mount Esau is um, the location where Esau's descendants lived. Right. And so remember, Esau was a, a child of Isaac. Right. He was the brother of Jacob. And so um, he represents um, the unwise bride. Right. He represents um the the person that takes something that's precious and gives it away freely as if it's not precious he takes the the pure and the holy thing of god and he just tosses it to the side as if it's not um precious right and so that was his birthright that was how he gave up his birthright for a bowl of beans right and so it says and your mighty men shall be dismayed o tidman all right. And so this is talking about the descendants of of Esau, which are mighty. And so if you think about that, that is saying when sin has is full grown, right? When sin has become great and sin has become mighty. Remember, these people were um, kind of had a pass with God as it relates to the children of Israel, not to really mess with them. But when they turned their backs on Israel and, and did evil against Israel, um, God remembered that. He did not like that. He was very displeased with that. And so Esau's descendants ended up being destroyed, right? It says, and your mighty men shall be dismayed, O ten men, and so that every man from Mount Esau will be cut off by slaughter. And so um, every man um, that was living there would end up being destroyed. The, the whole area was ransacked. And remember, they thought that they were invisible because they lived in the mountains and the cliffs. And so that was an area that was slightly protected it was more protected it was kind of a fortress but God showed that the everything could be destroyed it didn't matter right and so God is saying um through this scripture so many things to us right just think about this right now you know Esau's descendants were years away from um Esau Right. And yet this is a representation of the fact that, you know, when you make God your Lord, it is something that is a lifetime of dedication. Right. Esau, you know, it says the Bible talks about Jacob. I love but Esau. I hated. Right. And so we want to be the descendants and we want to grow up in God in a way that is walking towards him and not walking away from him. He intermarried, which was against God's rules. He tried to make up for it later, but he still was married to all these women that God had told him not to be. Um, he gave away his birthright basically for those beans. He he just was a man who did not value the things of God, right? Even though he was a mighty hunter and all these things, he just did not value the things of God. God chose what was considered the lesser, which was the younger brother um, and, and the trickster, um, the the one who would deceive. And he, he blessed him in place of Esau because Esau just did not make God his Lord. 
right? And so he, well, we are, we can't be the judge of that. We can just say that we know that his descendants were, were not of God, right? And so they were, they did things that were not of God and God ends up judging them and completely destroying them. All right. And so, um, you know, lordship is going to have evidence. Lordship is going to show itself um, in your daily life. Lordship is going to be a part of who you are. Who your God is can be seen in your life. And so let's look at this second verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 3. The husband should give to his wife her conjugal rights and likewise the wife to her husband. All right. And so... This is speaking about a marriage, right? When you're married, you have obligations, right? You have obligations of connectedness. And so when we are with God, if God is your Lord, you are to give your life to him, right? You are to give yourself to him fully, completely, right? Um, You can't have one foot in a marriage and one f- foot somewhere else right? You have to let him be Lord, right? As you grow up in that marriage, as you grow up in that connection, as you grow up in that Lordship, there should be evidence of roots. There should be evidence of growth. There should be evidence of fruitfulness. There should be evidence of height and width and depth, right? Love does not just stay the same. Love grows and it obeys and it stays, right? Love continues and it spreads, right? And so if you love God, remember Christ said, if you love me, keep my commandments, right? Christ wants us to walk with him on a daily basis. He wants connectedness. He wants growth. He wants you to obey the things that he said for you to do. Esau's descendants were a manifestation of Esau himself, right? They were more of that unrighteousness spread out, right? When Israel was going through and they were being attacked, instead of Esau's descendants saying, hey, those are our cousins, let's go help them. Instead, they they turned their back on them when they were being attacked. And in, in some cases, they would um they would capture some of the Israelites and turn them over to the enemy. That is not of God. And and many times they also um went in and ransacked their places, took their goods, took the 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 livestock, took the things that belonged to them, right? I don't know if it was the livestock. I know that they ransacked their homes. And so, you know, Lordship has evidence, right? And God wants us to remain close to him. He wants us to abide in him. He does not want us to come and and leave out sections of ourselves away from him. He wants all of us. He wants connectedness. He wants intimacy. He wants closeness. And he doesn't want us to love the world and love him. Amen. All right. The third verse that the Lord gave me was Romans chapter eight, verse eight. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Wow. And so if you are following and driven by the flesh, you that's displeasing in God's sight, right? That means you have made your flesh your Lord, right? And those seeds grow up. Those seeds turn into a great tree. Those seeds turn into a harvest. You got to kill those old seeds, right? You have to go in and take up those old seeds, those plants. You know, when you see something spring up, there's really no way to get the seed out. The seed is there once the seed is there. But once it's birthed itself and broken the surface, you can see what it's doing. And Holy Spirit is going to say, uh-uh-uh, that is not of me. I need you to weed that thing out. I need you to pluck that thing out of there and put something there that I want, something that's fruitful, something that Father God has desired, 
right? And so we need to make sure we're plucking up the things that are not of God out of us, letting God root it out, letting God cleanse us, letting God um, birth something better in us. And we need to turn away from the sin that so easily besets us, right? We need to make sure that we're turning towards God and turning towards the things of God. God has a great will in store for us and he wants us to come under lordship. He wants that intimacy. He wants us to not turn our back or 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 toss aside the things that are precious, the revelations, the word that he has given you and, and you turn towards the world. No, that you're going to come to a day of slaughter, right? You, you've turned your back on what is precious. And remember, it may seem like something small, but those things can grow up and be full grown and turn into a whole community of things. Remember the enemy never puts his foot in and gets a foothold and think you think that's it. He's just going to stay in that area. No, he always melts into the other areas, right? He always wants to take over everything. So he's not going to just stop with that one area that you let him have. He is going to do his best to make sure his kingdom all can come in the door. Right. So make sure you are allowing lordship in all areas and surrendering your heart to Christ. Amen. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for this word. Thank you for truth. Thank you for goodness. Thank you for holiness. We love you. Help us to abide in you and and pay the cost of daily death in you, Lord Jesus. Help us to put ourselves on the altar because you have so richly put yourself on the altar. We love you. Help us to eat of you. Help us to live for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, take care and be blessed.